My name's Lynn Evans and um, the symptoms started um, in 2018 in the November and we were going to, um, we were in Birmingham walking to the theatre and then all of a sudden I started to get really out of breath and I've never had that experience before that made me actually stop walking. I went to the GP and at the time they weren't sure what it was um, but um, they thought it could have been my heart and then in the June things got really bad for me um, with the breathlessness and I ended up um, having lots of different tests to try and diagnose what was wrong with me. Eventually they did diagnose it was a paralysed diaphragm. The diaphragm is the most important muscle that we use while we breathe our air into the chest. It is composed of two halves which work against each other, contracting and going down, sucking air into the lungs and expanding them in a longitudinal fashion. With injuries, either hyperextension of the neck, viral infections or other traumas, the nerve feeding the diaphragm can snap, causing it to paralyze. When that happens, the side that is paralyzed gets sucked up with the negative pressure in the chest, while the opposite side doesn't find a rigid structure to contract against, and this ends with both sides not functioning properly, leading to severe shortness of breath. The solution to that is to perform a diaphragm plication, which requires the side that is paralyzed to be stitched to form a very rigid structure, whereby that side of the lung expands to a nice large dimension while the opposite side can contract and partially compensate for the paralyzed diaphragm and come back to its normal functioning capacity. I was seen by Mr Habib in the March the following year just as things were going wrong with the pandemic um, but he had said that he would be able to do some surgery that would tie my diaphragm that was my kind of understanding it was going to be tied and pulled down because it was a diaphragm that was pushing my right side along right up and that's why I wasn't struggling to breathe really <clears throat> and originally he said it would be a couple of months before he could do the surgery and also would I be interested in having it done with a robotic arm um, he said, because that may well be a better result rather than just, you know, all the open surgery and it would be less invasive as well. Um, and obviously I was really interested in, yeah, I was going to have that. To do that, we need to put in a lot of stitches, which is conventionally done by open surgery and occasionally by keyhole surgery called VATS. However, in both instances, a lot of patients tend to have a recurrence after a year or two. With robotic uh, technology, we managed to plicate the diaphragm against the ribs, which meant that the patients tend to have a better result with a longer term outcome. Well, I, I, I had the surgery on the Friday, I think it was the Friday, and I came out of hospital the following Tuesday, I think it was a Tuesday. I wasn't really nervous about going in to have it because I thought, well, um, I needed, you know, if it was going to improve things for me, it was all well and good. It was feeling loads better and straight away I could breathe better after the surgery. The staff, all of them, they really put you at ease. Um, never having done anything like that before um, and it's such a good um, you, you're going to outpatients you're seeing and it's all under that area you don't have to go off to some other part of the hospital for an x-ray it's all within that outpatient which is really you know everything's done there we've been doing this for the last two years and patients have been very happy with the outcomes, which has been sustainable over the course of the years. 
it, it is traumatic, it is scary to go into hospital for anything, but the staff on those wards really put you at ease. And Mr Habib, he explains everything to you and he kept, he kept coming back to the ward to check at all different times and so, you know, any any little worries or qualms that you've got, they're answered and dealt with so, you know, you don't come away worrying about anything. The way I was before, I couldn't sit here and talk and, you know, I can sit here now and talk for England really.